Guys, that's your coming out. Today, Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I am glad to have you all here with me today. What could be better? Talking some Ray Shadow Legends and some love, some positive vibes your way, especially if you need it out there today. Uh, listen, we just did a video. I hate to be negative twice in a row here on the channel, or two out of three videos at least. We did a video with Scratch talking about the worst legendaries in the game. This is not that, okay? Before you guys in the comments give it to me, Ash, Raglan's not a bad champion. She's awesome. I use her everywhere. I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I am better. I'm not saying these champions are bad. It's a little dose of nostalgia. A little dose of... Who doesn't love a little dose of nostalgia, right? I'm thinking about back in the day. Back in my day, boys and girls. Gather around Grandpa Ash. Grandpa's the name, Frontier Times. Oh, Shut up! Because we're going to talk about the, the, the champions that everybody wanted, right? These are the best of the best. The best in the game, top 10. That's it, right? Epics or legendaries are going to stick to, right? And now they're just not that anymore. They've been power crept. I would love to see a buff to some of these champions just to keep them relevant because it stinks when you have the best champion in the game and then three years later, imagine logging in three years later like, oh, Oh, they're, they're a top 100, not a top 10 anymore? Top 200, not a top 10? In the last video, again, if you, in case you missed it with Scratch, check it out. I'm going to give a break to some of my usuals, two of them. I've talked about Razen Scarhide a million times. He's still very good, but I think he's way too slow. We are in a really big hurry. Sure. He needs to be sped up and bring this cooldown down a little bit from seven turns. Still a good champion, though. Uh, the other one that I'm going to give a break to here, guys, I don't have on my list, is going to be Altan. Because I've talked about him a million times. I'm, the idea here is to talk about different champions. Not the same ones every video, right? So, honorable mentions to those guys. Uh, but let's get to it. We do have one. I have one duplicate from that video uh, that I'll get to later on. But I already mentioned Raglan, so let's talk about her. Raglan, when I started playing, was the most wanted legend void legendary in the entire game at least people in my circles this is what who everybody wanted she was number one reviver by far and her revive ability miracle is still very good and very unique single target revive with a full turn meter on a two turn cooldown that's great the trouble is, there's a billion very good revivers in the game, and although she does have a cleanse, it's a four-turn cleanse. For a Void Legendary, imagine if they released a Void Legendary nowadays with a single target revive, albeit a good one, and a four-turn cleanse. We'd be like, what? What? Come on, that's it. What the f She's missing, you know, the modern day passive, or what is she bringing special to the table for a Void Legendary? Uh, she's still very good. But she's not the best anymore, okay? Number two, we don't have to go far, guys. We really don't. It's Septimus, man. Septimus has been hit very hard. Primarily one little champion. One little champion who has a blessed bash. Any ideas? It's Newt. Single-handedly just absolutely took Septimus from, you know, obviously the most used uh, Spirit Affinity enemy max HP champion to, I mean, step aside, bro. I've got your Holy Sword, but I've got it on a triple hitter. And I've got a better A1, and everything about me is so much better. And I was a fusion, so a lot more people have me uh, than a normal champion being added to the game. Yeah, poor Septimus. He still hits hard, but he's got a one hitter enemy max HP. That doesn't feel like it cuts it anymore for legendary nowadays, guys. Septimus is still useful. I mean, especially in restrictive content where you need an enemy max HP champion. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but he's not like he used to be. I mean, again, when I started, boys and girls, everybody wanted Septimus. You know, you had your royal guards. You had your husks. Husk actually was not popular at all. Nobody talked about nor cared about husk, right? You had your royal guard. You had your, I guess, uh, uh, cold heart. And then everybody won the legendary enemy max HP champion. Everybody wanted Septimus. Now, not so much. You don't hear people talk about, I really, really want Septimus. Everybody wants Newt, you know? Guess I'll be single forever, you know? He's number two. Number three, let's talk about an epic here, guys. An epic that I actually just used. Uh, so bad timing. And he's not a lizard man. He's a skinwalker, Ash. This was, Steel Skull was the number, you, you know, you OGs watching right now, you know what I'm talking about. But new players right now, 
you know, just take me at my word. Everybody wanted Steel Skull, right? Steel Skull was just the absolute solution to all your problems in Raid Shadow Legends back in the day. And now, oh man, he's been super power crept. He's still pretty interesting. He's got a lot of speed, 111 speed for the big fella here. I like the nip rings. I mean, I like the aesthetics. He's got it going on. He's got the increased defense on a, on a four turn cooldown. That's just not what we're looking for anymore. We want that on a three turn cooldown, even from epics, even from rares, honestly, right? Uh, maybe a little bit hyperbolic there, but he's got a cleanse and a heal. It's a single target. On single target abilities, we're really looking for a two turn cooldown. He's got a poison on the A1, but it's not at a huge land rate. And, it, and the thing is, the biggest thing about him is he was all about demon lord clan boss right you needed him you need him as a stun cleanser you need him as the poisons to do a damage to be your damage dealer and you need him for the increased defense right but now you know unless you're just starting out of course a lot of you guys probably don't have unkillable teams but eventually you're going to unlock your demitha you're going to unlock your man eaters right and you're going to get your hands on an unkillable team and champions like this increased defense epic they're just not as necessary as they used to be in the game anymore, you know? You can definitely get utility out of him. He's great in faction wars. I think he has a faction crypt uh, aura. He does. Uh, so, you know, like in, in some restrictive content, there's one cursed city floor or, or whatever room, map, place, location that actually is really good right now in Soul Cross on hard settings. So I used him recently, but he's just not what he used to be. Once What he once was, I should say. Uh, the one champion who I'm going to mention in the video, I hate this dude. I hate Gurgo the Augur. And it, you know why I hate him? Because he's so power crept, A. And B, because I wanted him so bad for so long. I'm going back to 2019 Ash. I was like, if I could get my hands on Gurgo the Augur, forget it. This dude was in Plat Arena. He was top arena players running this dude. I want him so bad. And now I, I got him, you know, maybe a couple years ago or whatever. And I was like, oh man, he's got to remove two random busts from all enemies. And then places a freeze on all enemies on a four turn cooldown. He grants an extra turn. And then he goes into Avalanche, which is an extra hit if they're under freeze. Only a couple problems, right? An AoE freeze on a four-turn cooldown, even with the extra turn and the random buffs from, from enemies. It's just, it, you know, with Polymorph, it's not it's not useful in the arena. It can be a nice CC in PvE uh, environments. But your Carl the Scourge, uh, even like Ninja years ago... Lori, I mean, there's a lot of freeze champions out there, right? Finding a CC champion nowadays in this game, gosh, it's so easy compared to before, right? Finding, uh, you know, uh, there's this a AOE three turn stuns everywhere, you know? Ah, oh, man, there's a lot, right? And if you go to legendaries, forget even void legendaries. I mean, it feels like every day, Armand's the Magnificent, right? Now it's practically a two turn stun. So to have a freeze, which is the least desirable because of the damage mitigation compared to a stun, it's just not that good anymore. It's just not. It's certainly not void legendary worthy. And Avalanche on a six turn cooldown doesn't even hit hard, right? If we're going to get an extra turn, give me something enticing to go into. You know, like I'm going to kill somebody guaranteed on a single target or an AoE or another useful AoE debuff or something like that. But an Avalanche that doesn't hit hard, like that's what I'm getting the extra turn for. Extra turns are not exciting if the kit's not good. <laughs> if the other thing they're going to do is not that good. He has some freeze on his uh, Frost Embrace, which is kind of useful, uh, kind of fun. But man, he needs a buff. He needs to do a little bit more than just freeze that's it you know all right number five this is gonna we're getting really controversial here guys brace yourself brace yourself this dude's still good he's to remember he's still good but when i started playing it was right after draco morph got his buff he used to be the worst legendary in the game and then in 2019 they gave him a big massive buff and there was only two champions in the game that had an aoe decreased defense and weaken venus and Draco Morph. That's it. Even Bellinor, for example, he was in the game, but it was a single target. It was before they buffed him, right? Now, obviously, there's a champion you may have heard of called Lydia the Death Siren, <laughs> who not everybody has, obviously. The majority of you guys don't, but everybody will eventually get her. You can get her, right? And she basically, once you get her, she totally negates the, the need for Draco Morph for this ability 
entirely on your account. She's void, she's better, and you can use her anywhere you can use Draco Morph. The only thing you want Draco Morph for at that point is the four poisons. Four poisons on a three turn cooldown. There's a lot of champions in the game that have four poisons on three turn cooldown nowadays too, right? You know, even an old school epic Aothar, an epic has four poisons on a three turn cooldown, you know? So Draco just, and they nerfed his A1 too, right? They came in a few years back. His A1, for those of you who don't know, used to be insane. I'm talking so insane that you could attack a guard and ice golem, hit it with the A1, right? Kill it, and then have enough surplus damage to kill the ice golem, to one-shot him. Then they nerfed the heck out of it, probably for good reason. Draco Morph is still absolutely useful, you know? AoE decreased defense, weaken, and a bunch of poisons, and a hard-hitting still A1. It's all useful but it's not like it used to be, right? Not like it used to be. All right, let's get to some some more juicy one. Actually, this one's I guess is kind of juicy, but Vizier Ovelis, man. Oof. Everybody wanted a Vizier. You needed him for Clan Boss to get really good damage on Clan Boss. You needed him just for the A1. Attack one enemy three times. Each has a 50% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. That was great. Oh, anybody who, ha who has a Vizier or who saw a video on Vizier at the time, watching him extend those poisons like the 10 turns on the on the clan boss, it was satisfying, it was fun, and it was exciting when you unlocked that. And it led to a lot of freaking damage, right? However, nowadays, A, there's not a lot of poison increased duration teams out there. It's not the meta anymore, right? And there are other use cases for Vizier too. You know, he's decent in other areas as well. Uh, anywhere you want to extend buffs. And he does have a kind of interesting heal reduction, block buffs uh, on a two-time hitter. Granted, on a four-turn cooldown, you know? So he's not trash, uh, but boy... He's not that special. I mean, they're adding buff extend or debuff extenders all the time to the game. More recently, uh, we had Aox the Remember, right? He has it on his passive. Uh, we have Gwendolyn the Silent. She literally has the same exact ability, right? 50% chance on a triple hitter to extend the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. And then the rest of her kit is a billion times better. She has an AoE decreased speed, leads decreased accuracy, increased accuracy, block debuffs. It's funny, I did a video talking about how much I love the owl. And a few people in the comments were like, she's overrated, you're over-exaggerating, Ash, you idiot. And it's like, dude, back in my day, if you just had the A1, you were an S-tier champion. And now she brings all of this... And some of you are still going to hate on her. Come on, man. The owl is legit. Uh, but I hopefully it makes my point, though. It's just like, come on, man. I mean, yeah, Vizier's great, but she's insanely good comparatively, you know, in terms of how far we've come as a game, right? Uh, okay, let's talk about her. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Martyr! What the f***? Did you just call me? I don't mean to call you Elephant Martyr. I I, I apologize. I apologize. I'm sorry. It was it was a it's a figure of speech. Martyr. Okay. So Martyr used to be the number one. I've said this before in videos. It's funny because new players, you know, it, it, I, first of all, I love that new players are still rolling into the channel, to the game. It, it excites me. It invigorates me. It keeps me super excited to record every day. But it's funny because I mentioned this a few times in the past. I've said that Martyr back in my day, she was the number one legendary in the game. Not a ton of comments, but somebody commented at one point that like, Ash, I think you're overstating it. She wasn't like the number one. I'm like, oh yeah, she was the number one. I mean, this is who everybody wanted. It was Valkyrie, Martyr, and Raglan when I started. Like, the, the, it, No matter your order, those were the three, right? Uh, because she has counterattack, right? One of three champions in the game at the time that had counterattack, right? On an AoE. She has increased defense. Great for, she was the best for clan boss. The best. Uh, she has a decreased attack and decreased defense for clan boss. Just essential debuffs. And you could use her for a provoker on a four turn cooldown in, you know, wave content. But then they introduce a billion other provokers. They introduce a billion ally attackers, which is similar, but not as good as counterattack, right? They just, and then they had unkillable teams became a thing, right? And they never went in and adjusted, like, again, they would never release a legendary nowadays with 93 speed, 
Granted, she has good survivability and stuff like that, uh, but she's just not, I mean, I don't think anybody would argue that she's not top 10, let alone number one anymore, right? And it's because of the evolution, again, of counterattacks not as special or essential as it used to be. Well, I already, I already said everything, right? And a, and a provoke on a four-turn cooldown, right? It's not as good, you know, it's not great for Hydra, for example, right? So other provokers, heck, there's rare provokers on a three-turn cooldown, right? Her kit is still very useful, and she does so many things in one kit as to where she's still a very, very good legendary. I want to be very clear about that. She's not the top anymore. And that's what this video is all about, right? Uh, she had a big fall off, kind of like Draco Morph. A big fall off, but she's still good. But they used to be like the best that this game had to offer, right? Now, I mean, we got mythicals with freaking increased defense, uh, provokes on three turn cooldowns, they've got HP burns, they've got true fear, they get instant activations, they've got strengthens, they've got resi- where, where the heck is this counter attack ability? Uh, that, okay, they've got three turn counter attack on, it, on all allies, they got block damage on all allies, I mean, this is what we're dealing with with power creep in this game, ladies and gentlemen. Going back to Gurgo the Augur, but a new one, it's Shuramani. Shermani I actually used her, you know, quite a bit recently. She was in a couple Curse City uh, floors, and uh, it gave me a fresh appreciation for this champion. She's got a triple hitter with a freeze on the A1. She's got a three-turn continuous heal and a heal, and then she's got an AoE freeze on a four-turn cooldown. But for the same reason uh, as Shermani, uh, excuse me, as Gurgo the Augur, Shermani, I mean, having an AoE freeze and a heal on a three-turn cooldown on one ally... Continuous heal on, on, on all allies. Well, the heal by 50%, the big heal is on all on one ally, and then the 20% on everybody else. But it's based on their max HP. It's 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 a good heal, but it's not a great one. Uh, but to have a continuous heal in an AoE freeze, you know, it's not awful. It, you can get utility out of it, but it's just not that special anymore, right? When we have three turn stuns galore in this game, right? Again, just to give you an example, he's not a he's certainly not a healer, but Look at Ragash. AoE, decreased defense, stun, three turn cooldown. And then he's got increased speed, strengthen, and a perfect veil on himself. Like, come on, man. That's the era of control that we're in right now. It's pretty bonkers. Two more guys. Uh, let's go with two, again, two good champions now who used to be essential and great. Nethro, man, he was my, I want to say he was my second legendary that I've ever pulled, right? Uh, and he he was such a game changer for me, man. I remember when I shared it on the channel here, I get a chorus of congratulations. You've done it, Ash. You've gotten the best guild boss champion in the game because of the triple poisons on the A1. You've gotten the best wave clear because of the chance of an AoE stun on a four turn cooldown. You've gotten the best control champion. He's got an AoE decreased turn meter by 75%. Nethril still is very, very good at control. Exceptionally good at control. But again, I mean, I, I shouldn't have to keep reminding, but there's a lot better control options. I mean, heck, how busted, how unbelievably busted are some of the control champions they're adding to the game nowadays, right? Archer Queen, she got a two AoE provoke on a three turn cooldown and an AoE stun and decreased speed on a three turn cooldown. That's AoE control nowadays, right? Plus, the rest of her kit is just busted. Now, I'm cherry picking one of the best they've added, but we talked about Armands as well. There's a lot of control that unfortunately is better than Nethril nowadays in the game. And his A1 is not essential anymore for Clan Boss for most players. And then again, it always irks me when OGs have super low speed and they don't go in and they touch them up a little bit, you know? They've done this with several champions. I wonder why they stopped it, right? I always mention Solus. He's the first one that comes to mind. He had like an 89 or 90 speed. They bumped it all the way up, uh, way up to around 98. I'd love to see them do that to more champions out there because Nethril could still be a really compelling, interesting, uh, good champion. He still is. He has it there, the foundation, uh, but no passives, no auras, you know, longer cooldowns. We'd love to see some of these goats get touched up a little bit and then last but not least and you guys can tell me who you would choose before i get to the last one i just want to say one thing here because i'm sure some people right now are commenting wow all these old champions suck this game sucks you know they just keep power creeping and nothing means anything anymore i would say no i would actually disagree with that you know i'll just point to prince kaimar who is the third legendary i ever pulled on my account 
I pulled him back in the day. And I rem- I'm not going to name the creator, but I remember messaging the creator and be like, is this guy any good? And the creator was like, nah, he's kind of mid, kind of trash. He's, he's all right, average. He's what? He is what? trash, Daddy. trash, trash. And now, like, he's really good, <laughs> you know? So not all old school champions are bad. Some are even better than they used to be, okay? Uh, just depending on how the game kind of evolves. So I, I just wanted to kind of state that Tyrant is another one, right? I mean, very good AoE burns, ally protection, increased defense, big version, three-turn cooldown. So there's a lot of actually better or really good OGs in the game, right? Uh, okay, last is going to be none other than... Hegemon. Hegemon can still be really fun. And honestly, Hegemon still has a place, even in the Polymorph and Stone Skin meta, on speed farming teams. You just have to be, uh, I guess, willing to put up with the fact that he's going to be negated in like every other battle. But when he works, he still works. And I like to build him as a nuker, you know, like build him super slow as a nuker, and you can have fun with him. But to have a four turn, 50% block active skills, like when you take away the go first, which again is so mitigated by polymorph and stone skin, that's all you're left with, you know? And it's not, it's not enough, you know? It's not enough <laughs> anymore at all. Uh, man, he had his time in the sun though, didn't he? Hegemon was, again, like a lot of these champions, like all these champions, he was the one that everybody talked about, you know, like, oh, you need to get your hands on Hegemon, he's the best. Oh, you touch my tra-la-la. Hey, I'm just realizing, I didn't really include many epics, only Steel Skull, I think, right? Well, I'll give an honorable mention epic to, to end this video off, guys. Uh, really... There's a lot of them, right? Uh, but I will give it to one of my faves. I actually really still love this champion, Umbral Enchantress. But I feel like even two years ago when Hydra was introduced, having a block buffs on a three turn, I mean, that was essential, right? You would even shut off, you would just shut off her Undying Evil because at the time you couldn't provoke anyway, right? But now I feel like there's a lot of buff, bu bleh, block buff options for Hydra. And in the arena, Kind of like, again, Polymorph and Stone Skin, right? Those two factors, they've really negated the power of having an, a two-turn provoke, even at the expense of locking her out. So, and she's slow and, you know, and so on and so forth. I still think Umbral's really cool and really awesome, but she's just one that, again, for me personally, I remember when I got her four years ago, whatever, I remember she was just like, this changes everything. And no longer is that the case, I feel like, for most players. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you're not too offended at the end. Much love. And as always, take care, guys.